Hey, this is Dave with the Shepherd School, and what we have here is a Ludlum radiation detector. It's a Model 3. Ludlum is kind of like Chevy, right, to uh, radiation detection meters, and this is a Ludlum Model 3, and it's pretty standard um, within the first responder community for looking at radiation out on a scene. So this is probably what you'll see if you have any kind of um, hazardous material type spill, anything involving radiation, somebody will probably be toting one, okay? They're not really that expensive, and you could probably get one for yourself if you want to spend the money. And we're just going to kind of show you a little bit about how it works. No matter what kind of meter, <coughs> excuse me, no matter what kind of meter you want, once you do, first thing you need to do when you pick it up, is look to make sure it's calibrated okay this tells you who calibrated it when they calibrated it and what they found okay if it does not have that you cannot trust it okay generally standard is every year you get it calibrated then you want to put the batteries in it okay you want to make sure before you put the batteries in it your probe is connected there's some capacitors inside this meter that kicks that voltage up pretty high and you can't like hot swap it like you can a USB port in your computer. The cables have to be connected before you turn the thing on. So you put the batteries in it. Then what you want to do is you want to check the battery. See it's got this uh, um, knob off and then it's got different times levels to it. Okay, And then it says battery. If you put it on battery if the meter is anywhere within that good battery sign, then it's okay to use. If you have a radiation meter with a selectable range, like this one does, it has times 100, times 10, times 1, times 0.1, because it's only got one meter. This picks up various ranges. You always want to start with your selector on your lowest range, right? So whatever this reads, you multiply it by... 0.1. So if it's reading at a thousand, you 1k, which is what it's reading now, I multiply that by 0.1, so basically it's a hundred. It counts per minute, which is basically um, when an atom is giving off energy, it's giving off radioactivity to become stable, it's kicking electrons out or it's kicking particles out. That's how many particles are striking this plate per minute okay if you're looking at counts per minute you're usually going to deal with um, you're usually going to deal with contamination and this is the type of probe that you use to pick up contamination it's called a pancake probe because it looks like a pancake the other kind is a hot dog probe and uh, it's just a stick and you use it to find fields of radiation but this is what if I thought I was contaminated I would use to you know, check my hands, whatever, to make sure that I'm not contaminated. And because we're checking, we want to make sure that we pick up the very least amount possible, so we keep it at point 0.1. And we're moving along with our meter at point 0.1, right? And I find something. See how it kicks all the way over? There's a reset button here. I press that reset button, and it bleeds that electricity off. Then I just go up to the next level. I go to 1 and it still kicks it off. So I hit the reset button, I go up to times 10, and it uh, hovers around 3K. 3K times 10 is 30,000. So the thing that I'm checking now is giving off about 30,000 counts per minute, okay? You hear that it has lo these little clicks, right? Most meters, or a lot of meters, have a sound off, okay? I turn the sound off, and there's no audio. It's still reading. It's still reading on the monitor, but there's no sound. Now, if I'm working by myself, I keep the sound on because it's easier for me not to miss the meter jumping, right? But if I'm working, say, with the general public, people who are afraid of radiation... That might scare somebody half to death. Now this is a plate. You can eat off of this, right? 
Obviously, that's not a dangerous level of radiation. But to somebody who doesn't know very much or is afraid or is stressed out, that might freak them out. Okay, so you can turn that on or off. There's also a switch that says rabbit and turtle. Uh, and that is how fast the, the gauge responds to changes. If it's on fast, it's going to move quicker. If it's on turtle, it's going to move slower. Slower is more accurate. Okay, but you know, fast gets the job done quicker, so you have to balance what's going on. Okay, now, generally, when we're looking at contamination, before you start to use this meter, you have to get your background. And the background radiation is naturally occurring radiation where you're at, and it changes. Like if you go to East Tennessee because of all the rocks, the background radiation is going to be significantly higher than it is out in uh, West Tennessee. And one end of a parking lot may have a higher level of background radiation than another. Like your basement might have a higher level of background radiation than your attic. And so before you start using this thing, you need to turn it on, put it down to the lowest level, and just let it sit and get used to where you know whatever it's going to read. Okay. Um, once I do that, that's my background. Once it can, and it's always going to kind of quiver and move a little bit. But when it's you know when it stays in one particular spot, you know pretty good. That's going to be my background, and and that's useful to know because. The standard is if I'm looking for contamination, contamination is twice background. So say my background radiation was a thousand counts a minute, right? Twice that, one times two, you know, is, is two thousand counts per minute. So if I get two thousand counts per minute, then uh, then that's that that person is contaminated, that item is contaminated, and I shouldn't use it until I clean it off, you know, till I decontaminate it properly. And once I start doing the decontamination process, I'm not done until I can get it back to under twice background. Does that make sense? And so now you're starting to see why this calibration is important because if it's not calibrated properly and you get your background reading all jacked up, you're going to get your contamination reading all jacked up and that can uh, be a bad day for you. Okay? Remember from the article that we did on types of radiation and alpha only goes so far and, and, you know, alpha can be shielded by a piece of paper. You know, beta goes a little farther and can be shielded by a piece of plastic. You know, your, your, skin, your, your skin cells, it can't go completely through your body, but gamma can. If we're looking at something and we're getting a reading, it's going up, sitting around about 4,000 4, or so, 5,000. Hit the reset button, go up the next level. Put it back on it. Five, six, but six hundred times one, so it's about six hundred uh, counts per minute. Okay. I put the sheet of paper over it. It did not go down, right? It's still hovering around six hundred counts per minute. So I know there's no alpha in that. Okay. I take something a little thicker. I put over it. It went down a little, but not a whole lot. Okay, that means that there's that there's gamma in there, right? And you, if you if you say you you have something you're reading about 500 counts per minute, you put a sheet of paper over it and it drops in half, right? You can uh, then you know half of that, whatever it dropped by, that's how much alpha's in there, basically, and that that spitball you know, out in the field thing. Health physicists will do some calculation to get you more accurate, but for our purposes, you know, that's pretty good. So, you've got these orange plates. They give off radiation, right? It's called radioactive red, fiesta wear, kind of a collector's item. It's because that orange pigment comes from uh, uranium. Smoke detector is radioactive. It's got americium in it. That's how it works. Okay. Old style lantern mantles used to be covered in thorium. That's radioactive. The new ones won't do that. Sheetrock, bananas, radiation's all over the place. Okay. Now, with radiation, this stuff comes out, but it comes out in all directions, right? 
lot of times when people are checking for radiation, they just have their meter and they're just they're just going out, you know, and and that's fine. But they're they're just holding it out in front of them. You need to check to the left of you, to the right of you, up, down, all over the place, right? Every once in a while, stop, turn around, and you you want to check everything. But you want to go kind of slowly because if you move too fast, you can skip right over a source, and I'll demonstrate that. Radioactive source, right there. Come kind of look at the meter. I'll take it. See how it didn't move? But if I go slower, right, see how it reacts? So if you're just going willy nilly here, there, everywhere, you pass right over it. Also, there's some lead here. I'm building a bunker. All right? I've got lead around that thing. As I come over, it's not going to pick it up. And I may think I'm safe because there's something in between me and it. And so I'm like, okay, we can go this far. But then the next guy comes up this direction. Right? And there's no shielding. And it's going to move. It's going to go up. All right? Won't go up over here. But it does over there. Let me put this thing on fast so you can see. You know? Depending on the shielding, this thing could, um, you know, shoot it out as a beam. Rather than, you know, it's there and it's easy to find. So you need to kind of go slow and you need to check everywhere. And if you get a hit reading, if you get a hit on something, right? It might not be exactly where you're at. It might be over to the right. And if that happens, you just kind of go all the way around and wait till you just get where it goes up the highest. And that's where your contamination is going to be. So, anyway, I know that um, was kind of long winded and, and discombobulated, but it's kind of hard showing the meter and uh, showing all the sources and the camera at the same time. Excuses, excuses, I know. But anyway, uh, basically here's the thing. If you feel the need to get a radiation meter, get a radiation meter. But make sure that you get one that's calibrated, that you understand what you're looking for, that you understand how to use it. Because if you do not, you may pick something up or may not pick something up um, that's there. And then you think that you're safe and you're really not. Give yourself a false sense of security. Okay? It's better to, to be scared than... than uh, and just stay away, then um, be overly confident and get yourself hurt. Like somebody said about my propane video the other day, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. So anyway, until next time, you can catch us online at www.tngun.com.